This is part two of the Rams defensive philosophy breakdown. If you haven't seen part one yet, make sure to check that out on our middle of the field closed coverages. This part is on our middle of the field open coverages and how we stop the run from there. Before we get into it, there are a few things that I want to explain. First, when we're referring to middle of the field open and middle of the field closed coverages, we're talking about whether there's a safety in the middle of the field. So we can see an example here of a middle of the field closed coverage. This would be things like our cover one, cover three, and cover nine, also known as our single high safety coverages. And that's because after our rotation, we're going to have a safety presence in the middle of the field. It is closed to the offense. If there's no safety in the middle of the field, then it's referred to as middle of the field open. This is what we're going to get in some of our cover two, four, six, and eight coverages that we're going to talk about today. And there's advantages to playing both. This is important because it's a quick cue for the play caller to decide how to best attack the defense based on the leverage that we're presenting. So that's another reason that this defense works well is because while we do predominantly run those single high middle of the field closed coverages, we do it from these two high shell alignments. We don't just line up with a safety in the middle of the field so that the quarterback knows, okay, right away I'm getting some form of cover one, cover three, or cover nine. We make him figure that out post-snap when there's pressure coming, when receivers are moving, he's trying to see who's open, but also see you know, what the defense is doing to figure out where he can throw the ball to, and that makes it a lot harder on an offense. Another thing I want to mention is what it means to carry receivers vertical. So to start with, we number our receivers from outside in, not just number one as in who's their best receiver, and number two who's their second best receiver, and so on. We count them from the sideline in. So if we were to have a receiver down here in the slot, we would still be counting Mike Evans as the number one, then the slot receiver would be the number two, and we just keep counting all the way until we reach the offensive tackle. Our defense is primarily what would be called a zone match defense, where the focus is on covering receivers once the routes distribute and making sure all the players are covered if they were to run straight down the field. Now, the offense doesn't always run four verts, so how each coverage handles it when they break off is where our differences come into play. But when we're talking about route distribution, we're talking about the passing concepts once the routes have initially developed and gotten past the line of scrimmage. This really comes into play when we get receivers that are close together in case they switch their releases. So let's say we have a bunch formation like we do down here at the bottom of the screen. A common way to run four verts out of this set is where the point man runs to the far seam, the number one runs up the near seam, and then number three runs a wheel. Well now, even though he was number three at the start of the play, after the routes have distributed, after they've gotten off the line of scrimmage, he's now the new number one. And this can be really hard to handle if you're in man coverage, these switch releases. So a zone match defense is better for routes like this because the player who was responsible for carrying that number one receiver vertical will now pass him to a different player and be able to carry the new number one vertical as he's running down the field. Again, if they break off their routes in different places, that's where the coverage changes up. But the primary focus we want to have is making sure if they run straight down the field, run a vertical route, we have them covered. That said, let's talk a little bit about how we fit the run from our two high coverages. So this is a look at cover four. We're in our base package, so they would call this cover four. We've talked about some of our other names when we're in our sub packages, our nickel and our penny fronts, and that's what we're mostly looking at for the rest of the video. But in our sub fronts, they would call it quads coverage. And we'll see those techniques played out later in the video in passing plays. So just remember that quads coverage for cover four is gonna be on both sides of the field. I don't have any clips of quads being played to both sides of the field, but I do have clips of it being played to a half of the field, and we can extrapolate that out. So one misconception about cover four, at least from a zone match perspective, is that it's a primarily pass defensive coverage, and it's really more of a run stuffing coverage than pass coverage. 
and let's talk about why. So think about an offense having five receiving threats because we've got five offensive linemen and the quarterback, so that's six players. They only have 11. The other five are your receiving threats. In cover four, we're accounting for four of them with our two corners and our two safeties. In other coverages, we're accounting for them with our linebackers instead of our safeties. So when our safeties are keying these receivers individually, if they join the run blocking scheme, then the safeties join the run stopping part of the coverage. If the safeties are responsible for either a half or a, a deep middle of the field, then they don't join the run fit as quickly. So when we're talking about our other coverages in this video or our cover one, cover three variations in the last video, they aren't jumping into that run fit quite as quickly. We saw it in the run clip in the last video when we were in cover one and Taylor Rapp was responsible for a tight end. When that tight end blocked, Taylor Rapp joined the run fit. It's the same concept here, except we're talking about the receivers that you're responsible for carrying vertical. Because if they block, then we know they're not going vertical. So you can afford to join the run fit. We're not worried about giving up an explosive play to them at that point. So here we'll see Ramsey on Evans. We probably got our corner up to the top of the screen looking at Godwin after the motion. Then we have a two tight end set over here to the right. So Scott is probably looking at the outside tight end wrap looking at the inside tight end as their vertical responsibilities. So they're all keying their player, and if they start to block for the run, they will join the run fit. So let's see it play out. All right, so we can see it really well from this view. They're keying their offensive players, right? We can see Nick Scott looking right ahead at his tight end. He starts to see that tight end blocking a Sean Robinson here. So we can see him coming downhill, getting involved in the run fit. You know, Troy Hill was looking at Chris Godwin whenever he came through and inserted through the line of scrimmage. He would have started coming out of the table to join the run fit as well. And then we have Taylor Rapp coming back to fill the cutback lane. So when those receivers block, our defenders come out of the roof and there is nowhere for that running back to go. Again, if we were in other coverages where our safeties are responsible for just deep zones and staying on top of total routes, like we'll see later in this video, or like we saw in our last video with cover one and cover three with that middle of the field safety, they would not join the run fit like this. So again, to me, cover four, and quads are more aggressive run fit because those safeties, when they see their key block, they join the run fit, whereas they don't because <clears throat> they join the run fit because they don't have that deep zone responsibility that they do in other coverages. So let's look at some of our two high coverages and see them against the pass. So here we're playing what Fangio would call Brooklyn. And in Brooklyn, the corners are going to match the final number one vertical. The apex defenders, our nickels, our outside linebackers, are going to match the final number two vertical. What final number one and final number two means, especially when we have a stack like this, uh, you might not always be able to guarantee that the widest receiver is going to be the number one receiver in the route or that the slot receiver is going to be the number two receiver in the route, so you match it once the routes distribute. So you can be pretty confident up top that number one is number one, and number two is number two, and that's how you need to take vertical. But down here at the bottom of the screen, it's much less clear. So they need to let those routes distribute first. So if number one goes vertical, the corner is going to take him. If number two goes vertical, the apex defender is going to take him. With halves the safeties are going to stay on top of the deepest route on their half of the field. So if only one goes vertical, then we have two defenders on him. 
If they both stay short, then we have that extra player coming from the top that we can make that play rallied short. The middle linebacker is going to be responsible for number three, who in this formation is the running back. So whichever side that he releases to is where the middle linebacker is going to go. So when we're playing a halves technique to both sides like this, if all four receivers go vertical, you want to get inside leverage from your apex defenders, you want to get outside leverage from your corners, and you're going to create a funnel so that we can get them close together for the safety to have an easier time covering both of them together. We do not get a very good funnel here from our apex defender down to the bottom of the screen. Thank goodness that Tom Brady didn't see it in time because he is wide open in the middle of the field over here. An easy throw is 20 yards. Because a receiver ran to the flat and this is a version of cover two, the corner would take the flat route, which he does down here to the bottom of the screen. Our safeties, you can see, are capping the deepest routes on their halves of the field. So this is Brooklyn. Again, that's what they call cover two from their sub packages when we are in a nickel or a dime defense instead of our regular 3-4. Remember these halves techniques because they're going to come into play with some of our other coverages. All right, here we have stuff. Stuff is what they would call cover six from our sub packages. Cover six is a quarter quarter half concept where we're going to be playing cover four or quads to the passing strength, which we have up top. And then we'll be playing that same halves technique we just talked about away from the passing strength. So it kind of looks like some of our cover three variations here because we've got three deep defenders, but it's going to play out much, much differently than they do. So here to our quad side, the apex defender has the first out. He is the flat defender in quad. So he's going to take the first player out. The corner is responsible for any part of number one unless he runs shallow, which he does here. And if number one goes shallow, then he's going to look for the deep out of number two. So you can see him now. 14 was the number one receiver. He has stayed shallow underneath five yards. He has broken his route. He's going to come back inside as well. So you can see now our corner's eyes are on the number two receiver looking to see which way he goes. The safety is responsible for the vertical of number two. If number two does not go vertical, he's looking to undercut a vertical route from number one, which is not happening here. So he is still eyes on number two as well. Then our inside linebacker is relating to number three. We can't see him with the box in play, uh, but number three is the running back. So our inside linebacker, Bobby Wagner, is waiting for Fournette to declare where he's going to go. This is the quad side of the field. Again, in stuff, this is going to be to the passing strength. Weak, we're playing that same halves technique. The corner carried the vertical route of number one, but now we see the quarterback has He's done what we call breaking the egg. He's taken his left hand off the football, really declaring his intention to throw it. And the reason he can see this is because he is off the receiver. If Kendrick was pressed on the receiver here, whenever he releases vertical, he would have to have his back to the quarterback. He would not see the breaking of the egg and be able to drive on this out route. So we see our halves technique still from our safety. He's capping the deepest route, which is the original number one. Our apex has stayed inside of number two. Then because we have our corner coming down, we're going to get a vice tackle here whenever he gets the ball. Still not as quick of a tackle as we should have. Kendrick really kind of missed him there. But again, you can see the point of playing top down from our defense. Our next coverage is cover eight, and it is just like stuff, but flipped. 
So we're going to play our halves technique to the passing strength, which we have on the bottom of the field. Then we're going to play our quads technique away from the passing strength, which we see on the top part of the screen. So no new techniques here, just a new coverage and how it plays out. So part of cover eight against trips is our weak safety, our quarter safety is going to make a tricks call. And that means that he is going to be responsible for the vertical of number three. If number three does not go vertical, he is turning back into that quarter safety where he's looking to cut underneath number one's route. So some positives of this is it's going to prevent the linebacker from carrying a receiver vertical, which if you watched a couple years ago, uh, Devontae Smith against Ohio State, you know that was a problem. They were in cover three, not cover six but it's still a linebacker being responsible for the vertical of a wide receiver is not really a winning game plan so that's the positive of the tricks call and a negative is now we are solo backside on number one if number three goes vertical again if number three goes in out anywhere but vertical then it turns back into our quarter safety where we're playing on number one, and we'll see that here in a few plays. But if number three does go vertical, then we are isolated on the corner. So this isolation of a corner on the backside of cover eight is really uh, probably the hardest technique that our corners have to do because normally we're in some sort of halves concept where they've got help from a deep safety or we're playing off and they still have help if number two goes in or out from that quarter safety. Uh, but here, when number three goes vertical and we have a tricks call, you've got no help. This is your guy unless he runs shallow. All right, so a few steps later, we can see our halves concept at the bottom of the screen. Our tricks call has taken number three vertical. Our corner carried number one vertical. The spot route was covered by our two hook defenders with our inside linebacker and our nickel. And then our half safety is splitting the two even deep routes. Our quad side on the back side, our corner has number one, what we call a mess technique, man everything but shallow. And then our linebacker did not cover the flats like he was supposed to and so they're wide open so naturally the uncovered receiver is where the ball went okay so in the open field between the 20s our defense is very known for that off coverage what is highly misunderstood about our defense is when we get into what's called the low red zone, when we get within about the 10 yard line, we are not known for loose coverage. You can see us, we are very much tightened up down here and that's our philosophy. We're gonna let the offense chip away, chip away. Then we're gonna get in the red zone and we're gonna lock them down. We actually had one of the best red zone scoring defenses in the league last season, but that has been largely overlooked this off season. So here we have what's called red quads. So red quads is just a red zone adjustment to our base quads coverage, which is cover four from our sub packages. Primary red adjustments mean we're going to have tighter coverage. There's no chance of an explosive pass play here. So remember the whole reason we play that top down deep shell coverage is because we want to prevent the explosive passing play. Well, when you're on the seven yard line, there's no such thing as an explosive passing play. So we can tighten down. So red means we're going to be tighter and we're also going to be protecting inside leverage a little more than normal. So we're in quads, which is that quads technique from stuff and from cover eight that we just talked about, except we're playing it to both sides of the field. Whenever we have three receivers close together and we're in quads, we want to make what we call a box call. The corner is going to take the first receiver up and out. The safety would take the first receiver up and in. The outside linebacker is going to have the first low and out. 
and then the inside linebacker would have the first low and in, and we're going to create a box between the four of them. So we've got one, two, three receivers all close together on this half of the field. So up top, we're just playing regular red quads, and down here to the bottom, we have a box call. So to the quarter side, up top, again, our corner is man on number one, everything but shallow, that mess technique. Our star is responsible for number two out. So if number two goes out, he's got a nail down on him. You can see slightly the outside leverage that he has. And then our safety is responsible for number two up or in. He will come out of the roof and slam down on a number two in. So let's look at how it plays out. Up here to our quad side, the star has taken the out route of number two. And then the corner, because he sees number two out, is expecting help from the safety. But he doesn't get it because he sees the quarterback breaking the egg. Looking down here, we have our box. Okay, Our inside linebacker took the first low and in. Our outside linebacker is staying on top of the first low out. This is very good technique here. You don't want to get too close to the receiver in case he bends this thing back up to a wheel. So he's doing a good job making sure he stays on top of it. You always want to let the ball bring you down to the flats. Our corner, because we don't have anybody up and out, our corner has come to take the second in. And then our safety is splitting the two here. And we'll see it play out with a PBU by our safety there. All right, very next play here. Again, we're in red quads. We've got our box call to the bottom. Quads up top. Again, we've got our one, two, three receivers very close together on this half of the field. So you make that box call. Up top, we are fine to be in quads because the receivers are farther away. All right, we can see our box down here towards the bottom of the screen. Corner had up and out. Safety has up and in. Our outside linebacker took the first low and out, uh, but the running back ran a Texas route here. He cut back across the middle of the field, so the outside linebacker's got to stay with him, and the inside linebacker is uh, sort of just kind of hanging out in the middle right here. He would pick up the running back. To the top of the screen, they ran the exact same route concept as the previous play. And if we go back to the last play, looking up top, so the safety sees the quarterback break the egg ready to throw over here, so he's breaking early. If we look wide open for the receiver in the back of the end zone, somebody in the box saw that, and on the very next play, they called the exact same route concept. It's the dragon concept. Uh, we've got slant out. All right, because the quarterback hasn't broken the egg yet, our safety got eyes on number one when he saw number two go out. When he saw number two go out on the last play, quarterback was already throwing. So he started to break on the throw. All right, number two is on his way out. The quarterback is not ready to throw yet. So whenever number two goes out, Safety's rule is to undercut number one. And there we go. Get a PBU in the end zone. And also important to note, this play was turnover on downs. Our offense was getting the ball back with two minutes left in the game and the lead right at this point in the game. Now our last clip here is not a clip of our defense, uh, but after talking about our defense and playing from top down and noting that that last play was before we were about to lose the game for what most people call being on the defense. A lot was made from then on through the season about why would you let Tom Brady have so much cushion to throw. Let me show you what Baker Mayfield can do when the corner takes a false step in press coverage. This is why we play the coverage that we do. It's not impossible for us to get beat deep but it is much more unlikely than if we were playing press 
Get in on the action with prize picks. Simply pick two or more players and win up to 10x your money. Join over 1 million people who have found a better way to play. Download the app today and get your first deposit matched up to $100 using our promo code DTRAMS.